stalls have been dominating surf fishing for over 30 years now. These reels are some of the most popular because of how well sealed they are, how bulletproof they are, and just the high quality components that go into them. This year, the new Vanstall VSX2 was released, which is this guy right here. In today's video, I'm gonna compare and contrast this guy to the previous model. If you guys are looking for any information on Vanstall reels that aren't right in front of me, like the VR or the VSB, just stick around to the end of the video. I'm gonna cover some info on those as well. So if you guys don't know what a Vanstall is or what makes it special, I'll give you the quick down and dirty. Essentially, they are some of the best sealed reels on the market. They're a reel that was originally marketed towards surf fishermen because their ability to literally be fished underwater. You can fish it in the sand, you know, you can drop it in the sand, you can dunk it in the salt water, and the heavy sealing is gonna protect it from the elements. Pretty much all you need to do is rinse it off, maybe give it maintenance every couple years. They're really bulletproof, and due to that, you know, really bulletproof design, they've gained a lot of popularity in Southeast Florida, and other areas just because of how strong they are and what a beating they can take. So there's very few reels that really compare to them and that's why they have such a heavy price tag. So this is a Vanstall VS250. This particular model of a reel was released originally in 1992. So this design has been around for around 30 years. In 2009, they actually started making these reels in China. All, all the reels prior were made in the USA. And that, you know, turns a lot of people off to be honest, y'all, I've been around these reels for almost my entire life, and I really didn't notice a huge difference in quality control from the USA models to the uh, Chinese models. This one's a Chinese model. I bought it in 2010. It's 12 years old now, and it's literally my oldest reel that I still use today. It's still getting after it, catching big fish. So if that doesn't tell you how high quality the components are and how tough these reels already are, I don't know what will. So this right here is a Vanstall VSX. It looks very similar to the original Vanstall. In 2014, right around 2014, this model was released. It kind of bridges the gap between the new reel, which I'm about to get to, and the original VS. Essentially, they updated the drag slightly. They gave you the ability to add an upgraded drag knob, which gave you a little bit dra better drag performance. But the biggest thing that they changed is the oscillation. So it gave you better line lay. The original VS, if you looked at the line like this, the way it laid line on its own was in a very a weird cupping pattern. And you're not gonna see that on my VS just because I spool all those reels on a machine and I try and counteract it by building up the braid in the center. But these reels, once they updated the oscillation and allowed for a better line lay, allowed you to fit more line on the reels and the oscillation doesn't wear out over time. So on certain older VSs, that oscillation system would start to wear down. So these, this Vanstall VSX, I should get another 10 years out of it, no problem. So this brings us to the brand new Vanstall VSX2, which is this beautiful reel in front of me right here. I haven't fished this reel a whole lot, so this is much more of an explaining the differences of the reel than it is a full review. Because honestly, in my opinion, the way these reels are and the way they last, I really need a full two, three years with this thing before I could give you guys a real accurate assessment of how is it gonna, how it's gonna perform. But I think the best way for us to really describe what's going on with this real vice, the old ones, is to go through component by component and just discuss what changed and what didn't. Starting right off with the drag, the Vanstall VSX2, they upgraded the drag washers in this reel and it comes stock with the power knob. So the original VSX, I had to upgrade my power knob from this little rinky dink thing here. You essentially couldn't get enough grip on this bad boy to actually tighten the drag all the way on the VSX. So you had to upgrade the power knob, it was like a $30 part. So they improved the drag performance on the VSX2 by changing the drag material. So there's new carbon fiber washers in the VSX2, which should provide smoother application. I haven't used the reel enough yet to tell you guys that for sure um, from my experience, but that's what the Vanstall is claiming. This reel, the two, VSX2 250, um, is supposed to put out right around 42 pounds of drag. I tested it at my house with a full spool line and only got right around 31 to 32 pounds of drag maximum. Now, that's not how real companies typically text, test their maximum drag. Typically, they test with like half or a quarter spool um, under different test procedures, but I can say I never really fish these reels at more than 10, 15, maximum 25 pounds. So, puts out plenty of drag, and it should be smoother than the prior models. The smoothness was one of the biggest issues with these reels. For a $700 reel to have sticky drag was kind of unfortunate for a lot of people, and it led a lot of people from buying, led a lot of people away from buying one. So if this new reel has silky smooth drag, like Vanstall is claiming, it's gonna be 
one heck of a reel. So Van Sol has kept their same titanium shaft, which you can see here. That is pretty much the best shaft in the industry. One of the strongest. I've seen bench shafts on very expensive reels before, like a Shimano Stella. I've never seen a bench shaft on a Van Stall. So when you have tension applied via drag, there is tension on the line roller, and then there is tension on the shaft, and they are being pulled together. So unlike competitors, Van Stahl has the best shaft. It has the strongest shaft made out of titanium. So I'm happy that they stuck with that in the new reel. So the line roller is exactly the same, which I'm happy to see. This is the best line roller on a Bayless reel that I've ever used. I've used pretty much everything on the market. It's pretty well sealed. They're not impervious. Eventually, after a year or two, these do tend to succumb to salt. The seal tends to fail eventually. It's probably the most common things that happens to these reels. And if, as long as you service these regularly, you're not gonna have an issue, but it works very well. It catches line very well. And I believe the material is titanium, so it's never ever gonna have braid dig into it or anything like that. It's very hard. You guys are really liking me going over all these nuances and giving you my unbiased opinion on these things. Make sure to like the video. It does help the channel out a lot and it will help spread this video to more people. So one of the first things that I noticed when I picked up the new reel was obviously the design of the rotor and the rotor cup. This one looks much more like a bailed reel without a bail on it, right? It doesn't have the typical cup design that the original van stall does have. So I was worried, maybe there's gonna be a lot of play in the rotor. And there definitely is some flex. So if you look here, when I grab the rotor and the spool, I can flex the rotor in towards the spool. So that actually worried me a little bit when I initially saw that. So what I did was I tested this reel as tight as the drag would go, as tight as I could get it with my hands. I hooked it up to my truck, I hooked it up to a spring scale to see really how much tension I could apply to this and see if I could get the rotor to touch the spool. With the reel maxed out, right around 32 pounds of pressure, which is unlike the 42 that Vansall advertises, I couldn't get the rotor to touch the spool. So there theoretically shouldn't be any issues when fighting a fish at maximum tension. I will say it's gonna be very atypical to fish these reels at anything above 20 pounds of drag for what they're intended for, striper fishermen. Most of those guys are really never gonna fish above 15 pounds of drag. So for me, it's essentially a non-issue. I do know some South Florida anglers do some stupid stuff. They lock the drag as tight as it'll go, hook sharks and set the hook like a crazy man, maybe. Maybe on the smaller reels, like a Vansol 150, there might be some crazy issues, but it's because the angler was doing something stupid. So if you look at the old reel design, you see the cup and spool, and that in the new reel design, you see a much larger gap between the spool and the rotor. On the old reels, supposedly, you could actually get the cup to touch the spool. So let's say there's a maximum tension applied. Right now, I'm touching the cup to the spool. So under maximum tension, the old reels could possibly do the same thing. I've never had an issue in over 12 year, years of fishing these reel, so I definitely have confidence that the body and the rotor on the new reel is strong enough for almost every fishing application. You'll notice the spool design is significantly different too. There's a lot more spool on the new one just based on how they decided to design the rotor. Now, these reels hold pretty much the exact same amount of line. VS250, VSX2250. This one, I just spooled it on a machine and I fit right around 580 yards of 40 pound braid. This one has 50 pound, I fit right around 500 yards of 50 pound braid on it. So for their weight, they hold so much freaking line. Literally no reel at that weight holds as much line that I'm aware of. So this is probably my biggest disappointment with the new reels. And I, I guess it's to be expected with some of the improvements they made. The new reels, Every single model, to my knowledge, is heavier than its predecessor. So this 250, I weighed it with a full spool line and it was right around 27 ounces. The prior model 250 right, weighed right around 24.7 ounces. So a hair over a two ounce difference. Now for some anglers, that's really not a big deal. This reel essentially weighs as much as like any 14,000 class Shimano or Daiwa. But for a lot of guys, the reason they bought these is because of how light they are for how much weight they hold. So a little bit disappointing. In the long run, it's not gonna be the biggest deal in the world, but it is something to note if you're looking at buying a new reel because man, if I've gotten 12 years out of the original VS, the VSX in my opinion is better built than the original VS, and this one's even better built. I don't know, maybe this one will last 30 years when the other ones only last 20 years. Who knows, but it may be something to consider. If you want the lightest reel possible, the original VSX might be the reel for you. One of the things that I'm most excited about on the new reels is they fixed the placement of the AR clutch. 
For 30 years, the AR clutch has been in the handle of the reel, right around here. So that placement causes a lot of back play in the rotor. You see, I can literally pull the rotor backwards. It feels really, really spongy. And when you're setting the hook on something, it actually causes kind of like a spongy feeling. Some people notice this, some people don't. It never really bothered me over the years, but I know a lot of people complain about it. And I'll tell you what, when you grab a $700 reel and it feels like you can break it by spinning the rotor backwards, it's not a good feeling. The new reel, they move the AR clutch right up underneath the shaft. So when you grab the rotor, there is zero back play. This thing is solid. Now, one could make the argument that that little bit of flex in the rotor will lead to that same spongy hook set. Up to you guys, but in my opinion, upgrading where you put the AR clutch is just gonna make a much stronger reel overall. So Van Stahl's kept with the same stainless steel gearing, which has lasted for 30 freaking years in the prior model. So I'm happy that they stuck with those. Very simple oscillation system. This has kept the same oscillation system that you had in the VSX, to my knowledge, and it's just lasted forever. So I'm happy that they stuck with that. I will say something huge that I noticed on the new reels is they seem on average smoother out of the box than the prior models. The prior models, some of them felt really smooth. Some of them felt a little geary and it's expected to feel geary when you have stainless steel gearing. But I will say every new VSX2 model that I felt has felt just a little bit smoother. The tolerance has felt a little bit better and it just seems like the quality control has been there for all the reels that I've felt so far. My favorite improvement, it was well overdue on these reels, is they went to a one piece body. So this reel now no longer has a seam right here where the foot connects. Right here on the old reels, it would actually separate over time. And I had both my VSX and my VS repaired this year after a summer of doing this. Now, I won't do it with the VSX because I don't want it to happen anymore. But you're walking down the beach, we're chasing tarpon, we're doing the mullet run, and you come up to a spot and you go like that. Now think about doing that a hundred times with these reels. If there's a seam where this foot screws into the body and you're doing that over and over and over again, maybe the Loctite on those screws breaks loose, the foot will just tend to separate and then it'll hurt the integrity of the seal there, eventually letting salt water in. So you'll notice on the new reel that the new handle is a little bit more ergonomic and it's a little bit longer. So a longer handle is gonna give you a little bit more cranking power as well as this shape. That's also gonna make it a little bit easier to crank against tension. Now, I wanna make a point though. Van is gonna advertise that the longer handle is gonna give you more cranking power. The longer you make the handle, the slower the gear ratio is gonna go. So you can just keep making the handle longer to give yourself more power, and then you're gonna keep making the reel slower and slower and slower. These are already a slow reel. They're geared at like four, two, five to one. So a lot of people like that, but just, in my opinion, if you're gonna keep making the handle longer, like where do you stop? You could just keep making it longer forever, and it's just gonna be awkwardly weird. So it's okay, but, just know that the new, you know, the Vansall VSX 200 was already painfully slow because of how small that spool was. It's gonna get even slower. Last note on the handles, the new VSX 2 comes stock with the round power knob. It's actually not my favorite. I'm probably gonna change this knob to one of these. I am definitely in the minority in that. I like these paddle handles more. They came stock on the 275 and most other old Vanstalls came with a rinky dink, tiny little handle that a lot of people hated. I used it for 10 years and caught plenty of fish on it, so it's not the end of the world. I've just recently upgraded all of my reels to this knob. If you guys wanna find knobs like these, just look up on like eBay or something like that. I typically find them pretty easily. Now, let's talk maintenance. Like I said, I've been fishing this particular reel for about 12 years now. It went from being like my only nice reel and I was using it four, five, six times a week fishing every day as a, you know, a part-time employee, high school kid, to, you know, it doesn't get as much use now because I have a lot of other rods and reels for other applications. But this thing has been fished hard for a very long time. Over 12 years, I think I've serviced it about four times. I spend about 100 bucks every time I get it serviced. That's really the cost of doing business. And that turns a lot of people off. I don't know. In my opinion, it's worth it to me. And maybe one day I'll literally be able to give this reel to my own son. So it's, it's kind of cool that you can service these reels to me. Um, and I think most people will get away fine with servicing it every three to four years. Now I haven't fished with, I've only handled the new Vanstall Bale, VSB. I'm not sure if it's VSB2, but essentially it's this exact same reel with the bale on it. In my opinion, based on everything that I've seen from this reel, if a bale is what you want and that's what you want to go with, that thing is going to be killer. It's literally going to 
be a better reel in my opinion just because it's not going to have the flex in the rotor that this one does because of the added rigidity that the bale provides so i see no reason if a bale is what you want and you want a super sealed reel to go with the van stall bale that brings me into the vr so the vr a lot of people love i am really not that big of a fan of it it's a real in like that $500 class. They're not sealed nearly as well as VS's or VSX's or VSX2's. I talked to a Vansall technician that's been working on these reels for 20 years and he hates the VR's. He likes the VR50 because it's just a cool little reel that's adequately sealed and you don't find little reels that are adequately sealed. But in terms of the standard VR's, everything other than the 50, he thought they were dumb. Because people try and treat them like these and they just get destroyed. They try and dunk them, they try and put them in the sand and they don't hold up over time like these reels do. In my opinion, this is just my recommendation to you guys, one random guy on the internet, I would not buy the VR. I would personally buy a Saragossa or a Slammer, maybe a Pen Authority, maybe a Twin Power for that much money. So take that for what you will. My buddy Aaron uses his VR all the time, catches awesome, huge fish on it, goes swimming with it. He likes it. I personally just haven't been that impressed with the reels at the price point that they're at. If I want to van stall, I'm personally gonna splurge and get the real thing. We come down to, if you want to buy a van stall, which one should you buy? Well, I can't recommend the VS anymore. I really think the VSX is just upgraded version of the VS. Even though if you find a used one of these, it's probably gonna last you a good while. The VSX2. I talked to a real technician that works on these reels for over 20 years, and he said without a doubt in his mind that this VSX2 is the best that's ever been made. He said, look man, they sell more than ever now, so you're going to hear about more problems now than ever just because there's more reels out on the market. But from his expertise, he thought this was the best built reel ever, and I have to admit, it seems very solid to me. I think I'm going to need a good two, three years of experience before I can give a complete 100% um, opinion on how well this reel is gonna hold up over time. In my opinion right now, if I, you guys were gonna ask me which one should I buy over the VSX or the VSX2, this thing is much improved. There's really no reason not to buy this reel over this one except for the weight. If you're a guy that weight is the huge determining factor for you, you want the lightest reel that you can get that is super tough and it's gonna hold up over time. You might wanna look at you know, a VSX 200 that's in good shape. You might be able to find one used and you might be able to get 10 years out of it because I'm still gonna be fishing this reel a lot on one of my lighter setups, but this one's definitely gonna get fished a lot. Essentially, it's like I'm fishing a Saragossa 10K, a Saragossa 14K, Saltigo 14K. It weighs right about the same as that, but a two ounce difference, you know, it does matter. It, it is something worth noting and it is something worth considering when you're trying to buy a high dollar reel like this. I love these reels. I've ragged on them a lot over the years. I've made some videos talking about what the things I don't like about them, but in reality, the only reel that I've had for over a decade that I'm still fishing. So you gotta say that they're gonna hold up over time. And I, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna keep using them. I love a bailless reel. I love a manual pickup. I love just how strongly built they are and how cool they are. I just think it's an awesome reel and it's perfect for the aggressive surf fisherman. Maybe a van stall isn't for you. Maybe you're looking for a reel that's quality that can catch almost anything, but you don't wanna spend like $700 like that one of these is gonna cost. Do me a favor, check out this video right here and I think one of those reels will solve all of your guys' needs. I'll see you guys over there.